हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल जर्नी विद विजय कुमार श्रीवास्तव टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द टॉपिक ट्रेप क्रॉप्स फर्स्ट इंट्रोडक्शन टू द ट्रेप क्रॉप्स ट्रेप क्रॉप्स आर दोज क्रॉप्स व्हिच आर प्लांटेड अलॉग विद द मेन क्रॉप टू प्रोटेक्ट इट फ्रॉम ए स्पेसिफिक पेस्ट और सेवरल पेस्ट बाई अट्रैक्टिंग देम दिस फॉर्म ऑफ कंपेनियन प्लांटिंग कैन सेव द मेन क्रॉप from decimation by pest without or less use of pesticides a trap crop can be defined as a sacrificial plant that draws away damaging insects from the desirable crop trap cropping is one method to reducing insect pressure on desirable crops while it is not the sole solution it can assist in an overall insect management plan trap crop may or may not be harvestable principle of trap cropping trap crops are grown as a control measure to lure pests away from the main crop or cash crop to protect it from attack pests are either prevented from reaching the crop or concentrated in certain parts of the field away from the main crop the principle of trap cropping relies on pest preference for certain plant species cultivars or a certain stage of crop development trap crop produce chemicals or volatiles that attract insects for pollination and repel pest insects different species and cultivars produce varying degrees of unique volatiles allowing certain species or varieties to repel insect pest more strongly than others making them suitable for selection as a trap crop there are two primary techniques for trap cropping like first one selection of a more preferred plant species or cultivar grown at the same time as the main crop and second planting of the same species and cultivar is the main crop timed to be at the most preferred stage of development before the main crop whether using the same or different species it is essential that the trap crop be more attractive than the main crop now to study the modalities of trap cropping these are based on various parameters like first one based on characteristics of trap crop on this basis trap cropping is divided in three categories first one is conventional trap crop it is very general practice of trap cropping in which growing of trap crops next to a higher value crop is naturally more attractive to a pest is either a food source or oviposition site then is the main crop by this there is preventing or making less likely the arrival of the pest to the main crop or concentrating it in the trap crop where it can be economically destroyed second is dead in the trap cropping in this modality of trap cropping is highly attractive to insects but they or their offsprings cannot survive dead trap crops serve as a sink for pests preventing their movement from the trap crop to the main crop later in the season like example indian mustard for cabbage diamond black moth and sun hemp for bean pod borer third is genetically modified trap cropping This modality of trap cropping is not a unique. However, because of its present importance and growing potential, we believe it bears a special consideration. There are already examples of genetic engineering in trap cropping and its importance in the development and improvement of trap crops is likely to increase in the future. Now, second modality based on the deployment of trap crop like first one perimeter trap cropping in this trap cropping trap crops planted around the borders of the main crop the use of field margin manipulation for insect control is becoming common in integrated pest management programs and is similar in practice to the early use of traditional trap cropping using borders of more attractive plants second is sequential trap cropping this trap crops modality involves the trap crops are planted earlier or later than the main crops to attract the pests like example indian mustard grown as a trap crop 
for diamond black moth in cabbage which requires planting mustard two or three times through the cabbage season because the Indian mustard has a shorter crop cycle than the cabbage and other coal crops. Third is multiple trap cropping in which there is planting of several species simultaneously as trap crops with the purpose of either managing several insect pests at the same time or enhancing the control of one insect pest by combining plants for attracting pests. Like example, use of a mixture of castor, millet and soybean to control ground nut leaf miner and the use of corn and potato plants combined as a trap crop to control wire worms in sweet potato fields. Fourth one is push pull trap cropping. The push pull technique is also known as stimulo deterrent diversion strategy is based on a combination of a trap crop pull component with a repellent intercrop push component. The trap crop attracts the insect pest and combined with the repellent intercrop diverts the insect pest away from the main field. Fifth is row intercropping. Row intercropping is the planting of the trap crop in alternating rows within the main crop. Additional trap cropping modalities. These are of two types. First one is biological control assisted trap cropping in which apart from diverting the insect pests away from the main crop, trap crop can also reduce insect pest population by enhancing populations of natural enemies. For example, a sorghum trap crop used to manage cotton ballworm, Helicorpa armigera and also increases rates of parasitism by Trichogema clonis. Second is semi-chemically assisted trap cropping. Semi-chemically assisted trap crops are either trap crops whose attractiveness is enhanced by the application of semi-chemicals or regular crops that can act as trap crops after the application of semi-chemicals. One of the most successful examples of this trap crop modality is the use of pheromone based trees that attract bark beetles to facilitate their control. Now to study the enhancing attractiveness of trap crops. First one, in general combining biological or insecticidal control to supplement the effects of the trap crop can increase the effectiveness of a trap crop. In this, there is the addition of insect pheromones, plant chiromones, or insect food supplements. In this method, selecting a trap crop that produces large quantities of chiromones to attract the targeted insect and adding an attractant to this crop is an important aspect of increasing efficacy of trap crop. Some chemical stimulants like semi-chemicals work as attractants or deterrents for an insect's evaporation or feeding behaviors which can be used to manipulate the insect's behavior to reduce damage to the main crop. Such semi-chemicals can be incorporated into the trap crop system. In another system which is known as push-pull mechanism, this system involves a combination of trap cropping, crop diversification, intercropping, and manipulation of semi-chemicals. The idea is to simultaneously attract the insect pest to a trap crop and deter them from colonizing the main crop. Third mechanism is plant breeding can be used to develop trap crop cultivars with enhanced attractiveness to the insect pest or low larval survival such as glossy wax traits or attractiveness to natural enemies. Enhancing the effectiveness of trap crop is vital to minimize the land sacrificed to production when using trap cropping. General guidelines for trap cropping recommended that about 10% of the total crop area be planted with the trap crop. Although the percentage of trap crop needed for each particular system has to be determined for each case. Fourth mechanism is cultural control. Cultural control methods can also be used to increase the effectiveness of trap crops. 
होस्ट यूटिलाइजेशन बाय मोस्ट इंसेक्ट हर्बिवोर्स पार्टिकुलरली स्पेशलिस्ट इज कंसिस्टेंट विद द रिसोर्स कंसेंट्रेशन हाइपोथिस इन दैट दे आर मोर लाइकली टू फाइंड एंड रिमेन इन होस्ट दैट आर कंसेंट्रेटिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल डायमंड बैक मॉथ एडल्ट वर मोर अट्रैक्टेड टू लार्ज ग्रुप्स ऑफ कोलाड प्लांट्स देन टू स्मॉल ग्रुप्स एज वेल एज टू लार्जर प्लांट्स एंड हायर प्लांटिंग डेंसिटीज वाटर स्ट्रेस कैन ऑल्सो इंक्रीज द अट्रैक्टिवनेस टू सर्टन इंसेक्ट पेस्ट इन सम प्लांट्स बट नॉट अदर्स इंडिकेटिंग दैट सम ट्रेप क्रॉपिंग सिस्टम्स कूड बेनिफिट बाई कंट्रोलिंग वाटर स्ट्रेस द स्पेशल अरेंजमेंट ऑफ ट्रेप क्रॉप इज ऑल्सो इम्पोर्टेंट now the advantages of trap cropping like first one trap cropping reduces the use of pesticides it lowers the expense on pesticide cost by trap cropping damage to the main crop is limited therefore main crops seldom require treatment with insecticides trap cropping preserves the indigenous natural enemies and improves the quality of crops it helps in conserving the soil increase productivity and having potential role in improving the environmental soundness and additionally trap cropping enhances naturally occurring biological control by attracting natural enemies of pest insects now here to study the some considerations regarding trap cropping the design and arrangement of traps and main crops depends largely upon the target pest knowledge of target insect behavior is therefore necessary when creating a field design trap crops may also be designed for nematodes and fungi that cause plant diseases the required size of the trap crop is a function of the number of pests expected and the mobility of a species but the production of the trap crop is typically 10 to 20% of the main crop The primary key for effective trap cropping is the successful establishment and management of the trap crop stand. More desirable plants within the trap crop stand will have a greater impact on luring pests away from the main crop. For enhanced control, the use of trap crops can be combined with other pest management strategies such as crop rotations to reduce the number of expected pests. and pheromone traps to attract pests to desired areas away from the main crop despite the benefit of using trap crops there are several concerns trap cropping is only beneficial when fields are likely to be invaded with high numbers of pests improper management of pests on trap crop may create pest nurseries facilitating a more rapid or wide spread pest outbreak then may otherwise have occurred treatment of trap crops with insecticide may lead to increased evolution of pesticide resistance and destruction of natural enemies further complications may arise when trying to manage multiple pest with different behaviors application may be limited for certain crops since the trap crop will be most effective when it begins to flower or seed it's important to establish its earlier than the desirable crop a good starting point is to plant the trap crop two weeks prior to the desirable crop to provide an extended control session it is also suggested that the grower continue to stagger new plantings of the trap crop every 2 to 3 weeks trap crops work best when planted at least 8 to 12 feet away from the desirable vegetables or crops two to three rows of each trap crop should be planted at a time it is important to scout trap crop frequently and to prevent the insect population to get out of hand before some control measure is applied trap crops will need similar care to your desired crops when it comes to fertility and irrigation weed infestation should also be managed with mechanical or chemical methods trap cropping is one weapon that can be used to combat insect pressure for the commercial and home grower 
research has shown that it can assist in providing some relief of insect pressure to desirable crops trap cropping may not work for everyone but it is a possible solution for those preferring to use fewer chemicals in their garden tips for successful trap cropping there are several factors which need to be taken into account when planting a trap crop like first one different insect pests prefer different trap crops we have to select a trap crop that is more attract- attractive to the pest than the main crop ask for assistance from your local agriculturist to get the support which trap crop you choose depend upon the pest you are trying to trap if the plant is not sufficiently attractive to the pest then it won't be easy to choose so it is vital to pick the right ones often this is a matter of experimentation coupled with observation of what the pest go for in your garden second is layout of the trap crop we have to make a farm plan this will guide us where the trap crops are to be planted for some insect it is sufficient to plant the trap crop around the border of your growing area others are harder to stop and it may be necessary to interplant them to draw them off the main crops quantities will depend on the insects you are trying to deter but farmers usually set aside something in the region of 20% of the main crop area for the trap crop a smaller gardens growing a variety of vegetables will often need less than this now the timing most insect invasions happen at a specific time of year for example if we get an aphid invasion in late may or early june it is important to have the trap crop already well established by the time pest arrive next is beneficial insect use trap crops are just one part of good organic pest control and need to be need to be balanced with adequate companion planting of flowers to attract beneficial insects such as lace wings and ladybugs which feed on the pests another practice is management of trap crop immediately control the pests that are found on the trap crop prune or remove the trap crops once the crop population is high otherwise they will serve as the breeding ground and the pest will attack the rest of your farm be ready to sacrifice your trap crop age in early crop and destroy them once pest infestation is high the trap crop may be harvestable or non harvestable here we have shown the examples of trap crops like in main crop of cotton there are various crops are grown as a trap crop which are used to control different pests like in cotton castor plants are used as a border crop to control heliotis alfalfa is used as a strip intercropping to control lycus bug chickpea is grown as a block trap crop to control heliotis corn is grown as a row intercrop to control heliotis bollworms cowpea is grown to control heliotis as a intercropping okra is used as a border crop to control flower cotton weevil and heliotis bollworms sunflower is also used as a trap crop in cotton as a row intercrop to control heliotis and tobacco this is also used to control heliotis in main crop of corn other crops like beans and legumes are used as row intercrop to control leaf hopper leaf beetles stock borer and fall armyworm Napier grass is used in corn as a intercrop and border crop to control stem borer. Soya bean is cultivated as a row intercrop to control heliotis. Sudan grass can be used as a trap crop in corn as a intercrop or border crop to control stem borer attack. Then vertiver grass can be also used as a perimeter crop to control corn stock borer. And desmodium is used as a row intercrop in corn to control stem borer attack now in soybean crops green beans are used as a row intercrop to control mexican bean beetle and rye crop is used as a row intercrop to control corn seedling maggot and sesbenia is also used 
is a row enter crop to control a stink bug and sickle pod is used as a strip enter crop to control velvet bean caterpillar and green stink bug in cabbage and cauliflower coal crops also there are various strip crops are used to control various insect pest like tomato is used as a enter crop to control diamond back moth indian mustard is used as a strip crop to control cabbage head caterpillar chinese cabbage mustard and radish is grown as a trap crop and planted every 15 rows of cabbage to control cabbage waveworm flea hopper and mustard aphid and collards are grown in cabbage to control diamond back moth as a border crop nasturtium is grown as a row enter crop to control aphids flea beetle cucumber beetle esquash vine borer and sesame crop can be grown in cabbage and cauliflower in cabbage it is used as a row enter crop to control diamond back moth and in cauliflower as a row enter crop to control diamond back moth and radish crop is grown in cabbage family as a row enter crop to control flea beetle and root fly maggots onion and garlic crops are used as a trap crop in carrot as a border crops to control carrot root fly and thrips vessels and marigolds are grown in garlic as a border crops to control thrips and desmodium is used in cowpea millet and sorghum to control astriga marigold is used as a trap crop in solanaceous family crops as a row crop or strip intercropping to control nematodes in this is also used in crucifers legumes and cucurbits then castor and sunflowers are grown in groundnut to control leaf eating caterpillars marigold is used as trap crop in tomato crop is a intercropping to control tomato fruit borer and sunflower is grown in tomato to control leaf footed bug sorghum is cultivated as a trap crop in maize to control maize stock borer and gingelly is used as a trap crop in cowpea to control bihar hairy caterpillar and chrysanthemum in field beans as a border crop to control leaf miner so these are the various examples how the trap crops are grown in various main crops to controlling a specific pests so this presentation was all about trap cropping hope this will be useful to all of you thank you very much i have given here my youtube channel details journey with vijay kumar srivastava having request please visit the channel subscribe it and provide your kind and valuable feedbacks thank you